Next, we want to ask more precisely, what does the total revenue curve look like? So total revenue is the hunger quantity. What does it look like? We already established that at Q equals zero, total revenue is equal to zero. I may have said before that whenever Q goes up, total revenue goes up. Whenever you sell more, you get more money from your customers. That's actually not necessarily true. We want to now think about a really important special case, the case of perfect competition. In the case of perfect competition, the firm takes prices as given. Or, more particularly, the firm takes price as given. Because we're actually here talking about output price. So we're talking about being competitive in the output market. The firm also has input markets, the water, in water market for water and market for fertilizer. And we are here not talking about whether the firm is competitive in the input markets. That is, whether it takes the price of water and the price of fertilizer is given. We talked about that in the cost chapter. Here we're talking about the output market. So perfect competition says the firm takes the output price as given. What this means is the firm thinks that there's absolutely nothing it can do to affect the price that it gets for its output. It's important to understand that in a modern economy, very few firms are perfectly competitive. Any firm that has a brand name, Apple Computer, Toyota Motor Company, Chiquita Bananas, is a firm that thinks it can affect the price. And so it's not perfectly competitive. The reason is, if you, why have a brand? It's advertising. Why have advertising? Because you want people to buy your product more. That means you think you can affect the, uh, the product market. And in some sense, it, it means that, that you have market power, that you pick the price at which you sell bananas or automobiles or iPhones. The best example of perfect competition in a modern economy is agriculture. If you're a corn farmer in Iowa, you don't think you can affect the price, the worldwide price of corn. No matter whether you plant a little or a lot, it's the worldwide market for corn is huge and you're just one small part of it. Nothing that you do is going to affect the worldwide price of corn. Or if you are a wheat farmer, the worldwide price of wheat. So when you hear the words perfect competition, you need to think of firms like that, firms that don't set their price. Even a small entrepreneur, let's say a, a owner of a barber shop, in some sense sets his, well, I shouldn't say in some sense, he sets his price. He decides whether he wants to charge you know, $20 or $15 or $30 for a haircut. So he's not perfectly competitive. The only firms that are perfectly competitive are ones that have no pricing power. One of the reasons why this is hard for students to learn is that this sense of the word competition is completely the opposite of the sense of the word competition in everyday language. In everyday language, competition means to compete against somebody else, to fight against somebody else, to struggle against somebody else. In economics, perfectly competitive firms never fight against anybody else. They never struggle. There's n perfectly competitive firms don't compete a corn farmer in Iowa is not competing against his neighbor. There's no point. His neighbor is also really small. They're both these really small guys who nothing they're going to do is going to affect anything. The price that they get for their crop d is not affected by what your neighbor does if you're a corn farmer. So perfect competition in economics doesn't mean competition. It actually means lack of what in everyday language is called competition. And that is, that's a rather odd use of language. And so it's a bit difficult for students sometimes to remember. So perfect competition, the firm takes output price as given. What that means is that in the mathematical equation, TR of Q 
equals price times Q, where Q is quantity, price is a constant, like 17, or 101.3, or 2. And therefore, so we can write this as P times Q, where again P is a constant, Therefore, the total revenue curve looks like this. It's a straight line going through the origin. Because the graph of a straight line going through the origin is a constant times the variable that's on the horizontal axis, so P times Q. So under perfect competition, the total revenue curve looks the way I've drawn it. What about average revenue and marginal revenue? Let's do marginal first. Well, marginal revenue is the slope of the tangent lines. All these tangent lines have exactly the same slope. And therefore, marginal revenue, MR, is just going to be 0. Okay, the units would be rise over run. The rise is dollars. The run is bushels. So the correct units are dollars per bushel. How about average revenue? I'll take a point, draw a line to the origin, another point from the origin, another point from the origin. Clearly, the average revenue is the same as the marginal revenue. So, and and let's figure out what average revenue is because we can uh, do this. Okay, this is a certain quantity. Let's call it Q1. And this is what what is the total revenue. Let's just do the total revenue. The total revenue is P times Q1. So what's the average revenue? Well, the average revenue at Q1 is the total revenue divided by Q1. Total revenue is P times Q1. That's divided by Q1. That's just P. In other words, average revenue is equal to P. And there was nothing special about the Q1 that I picked. So for any Q1, this is true. In other words, average revenue is equal to P. This also means marginal revenue is equal to P. Those of you who know calculus can figure that out in the following way. Total revenue is P times Q. Differentiate both sides. The derivative of the left-hand side is marginal revenue. The derivative of the right-hand side is the derivative of P times Q, which is P is a constant, and it's dQ by dQ, which is 1, so marginal revenue is just equal to price. I want to ask you about calculus on an exam, so if you didn't understand that, don't worry about it, right? because you guys have already can see in, in the other way I proved it that marginal revenue equals average revenue and that equals price. So this is a fundamental concept for a perfectly competitive firm. For the rest of this chapter we're going to be studying perfectly competitive firms. That's not true for the rest of the semester. There is a chapter that we have a monopoly that we're going to be dealing with and we'll also talk about imperfect competition and input markets. But for the rest of this particular chapter now, firms are going to be assumed to be perfectly competitive, so total revenue is going to be a straight line starting from the origin, and margin revenue, average revenue, and, uh, and price are all going to be the same thing, and MR and AR are going to be the same, and they're going to be flat lines at the price.